Hello, my name is Anne and I'm going to share a bit of my story with you. I'm 30 years old and I have a daughter called Hannah who is just about to go to secondary school. I also have a cat called Boyo. <laughs> when I was a baby I didn't sleep for the first few years of my life and my mum noticed I was happy to spend a lot of time on my own. I could read a newspaper when I was three but I didn't make any friends at school or talk for the first year of school. When I went to secondary school, I found it hard to be in a big school and I asked my parents if I could go to boarding school because I thought it would be better. The staff were good to me and the other girls were very understanding that I was different. I liked the routine and safety of going to boarding school. And then I left school, I went to college, but I found it difficult to keep up. Then I got a job, but found it difficult to remember everything I was meant to do. When I was 19, I had Hannah. I spent a lot of time in hospital. I had to go to London to have a parenting assessment and I got discharged and struggled a lot until a couple of years ago. I've got Asperger's syndrome and have some related mental health problems. It was difficult to get support because I do not fit into any boxes. I do not have a learning difficulty or mental illness. So the main thing about my condition is the anxiety which builds up. It's hard for people to recognise because it didn't show up as in other mental health conditions and it can build up from nowhere. A few years ago it got so bad I took an overdose and ended up in hospital. Psychiatric hospital is not a suitable place for people with autism because it is very noisy and the staff are not very experienced in dealing people with autism. Some don't really believe that it exists. I was put in touch with an advocate by a helpline and that's when things started to change for me. She put a case forward for me to get direct payments. Direct payments are paid directly to the disabled person by social services so they can employ a personal assistant who they've chosen themselves to help them. So I got to interview her and um, decide who I wanted to employ, which is particularly in helpful for people with a dual di diagnosis to have different needs to get the help that they need. Depression is not necessarily connected with the disorder, but having to deal with it makes you depressed. Direct payments have really changed my life. I do a lot more things for myself, doing my own shopping, looking after my own child, helping to run a parent and toddler group and brownie guide pack, dealing with a budget, cooking my own food, and I just live like any other mum, just ordinary, nothing special, just being a normal person like everyone else. Being a mum, not the person with the mental health problems. AS is incurable, but getting help has made me want to live with it, not die with it. The anxiety can build up so much and there are no tablets to make it go away. Things that don't worry other people make me very anxious, like not getting my post on time. I can talk things through with Wendy and things don't seem so bad after all. I love being a mum, as now just a normal mum. Hello to everyone out there who is watching Beyond the Label exhibition and wondering what disabled people do. We don't sit all day watching daytime TV and chittle our thumbs. We lead very busy and successful, independent and busy lives. My name is Abby Chambers. I am 28 years old. I was born with a rare condition called arthrogryphosis, multiplex congenital genital, which means that I have dislocated hips, my joints are deformed and my muscles are weak. I also suffer from chest infections and I have been diagnosed as having asthma slightly. I was put in plaster when I was six days old until I was six months old to straighten my feet. As I have grown up, I have become a more stubborn, confident lady. 
and I won't take no for an answer. I will try things. It might take me longer than everyone else, but I will do it. Sometimes has its advantages, like country tricking them to watch Eng England play. I am a Hills Rugby Union fan, and I get free tickets. I sit on the touch line, come rain and shine, and then meet the players after the game. I have met all of the 2003 Rugby World Cup squads. My pride and joy are Matt Dawson's rugby shorts and socks, and he signed his book for me. I have never let my mum wash his shorts or socks. They have the chicken and mud on them. I was where the players come up after the match, fighting for some of the players. Everyone was screaming his name and he just came out and talked to me and he gave them to me. He said something, I'm sure you would like these. From then on, I have been a massive fan of Max Dawson's and I won't have anything said against him. My first love came into my life. He is a lecturer named Jack. He is a lecturer crossed between a whippet, greyhound, and a bedlinton terrier. He is crazy mad, and he is a thief with a capital T. I have had many dogs before, but Jack is very special to me. When I was 10, I went down to a boarding school in Surrey called Nanhest, just outside Guildford in a village called Cranley. I travelled down there every Friday and Sunday. It took hours sometimes to get home and to get to school. I am going to a 10 year reunion. It is going to be weird to see all of my old school mates and see what they are up to now and to remember the old times. Hey, my name is Gary Demis. I am at is art. I am at Martin is Christopher at we have an hour by Nicholas at it is a good I have separate pussy at a service at a pump. I have dolphins, I have a way of dolphins, I have book, stickers, pictures, photograph, a toy, dolphins. Dolphins make me mad and make me happy. The best job I could do in a whole world would be for me to be a dolphin tailor if I would do. I was very lucky as I went to Perth where I went with Duffy. It was good fun. Apart for Duffy, I also love my best super at what is everywhere. 
I am your Uchinaju, your Mamushi, and my iPod.